Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Game Theory, the dark future of the Dream SMP Minecraft by the Game Theorists. Now this, this is something I'm really interested in because the thing is, is I've been following the Dream SMP for a while and I, I like it. I think it's a good, it's a good thing. I, I like that Dream doesn't really make much content on it because he wants to, you know, give Wilbur, Soot, give Tommy in it, give Tubbo, like all those guys content because they actually write the stories. By the way, it, it, it's fake. I mean, I wouldn't put it like that because, you know, it's not fake. You know, it's scripted. It's like they want to write stuff, but obviously there's also improvised stuff and comedy bits that they obviously will do because, you know, like they can go off script whenever they want, but still, I, I'm totally fine that it's scripted because, you know, like it's cool. That actually makes it really cool. And the fact that there was also multiple scripts for the election arc is really cool. I like that. I think the script for the election art where Schlatt won w was way better than the one where Wilbur and Tommy won because, you know, just making Schlatt a villain and making Wilbur and Tommy just like these two outcasts was so perfect and just way better than like them being complete dictators because it just made their characters better. But I also just like the twist that, you know, Wilbur blows up Manberg because it's it, it's also so much better too because you completely understand it. But yeah, honestly, I also like what Wilbur's doing where it's like ghost spur, but I also just love the fact that like, you know, Technoblade also like acknowledges the flaws of the plot of well how like it's kind of annoying the uh the exile arc where it's like oh this is gonna be fun and then it's like uh no these characters cause problems on purpose because they were written that way so like he gets annoyed but it's funny honestly it's funny but yeah honestly the exile arc yeah it's it, it it could go somewhere especially the fact that like dream also made a prison there's that and i'm guessing tommy and it's gonna go there also the fact that Dream is searching for Tommy, and Tommy is, you know, like, hiding out with Technoblade. There's that, so, you know, that, I think that's what's gonna happen, but yeah, I don't really know the future, or where this is gonna go. I haven't really, like, thought it out, because I feel like if we were talking about the, the election arc, it would be so much more interesting. To me, for me, the exile arc isn't really as interesting, because I can tell that, like, it's kind of similar to the election arc, but it's just like Tommy in it. But it is very similar. It is very similar. And I guess it could go down like the same way because like Technoblade obviously, you know, wants to create minor terrorism in Lemanberg and also, you know, wants no government. So and that's good. But yeah, anyways, enough with me rambling. Uh, original links in the description. Make subscribe to the Game Theorist. Thanks also in the description. Oh, let's get right into it. Lemanberg! The flag. Yeah. Is it gonna go on fire because Fundy? Yeah, yeah, I literally called it. Literally called it. It's set on fire. Except it wasn't by Fundy. By the way, this shows how big of an impact that Dream has had. The fact that the Dream SMP is getting a game theory of its own is insane. Because, like, it's not even really like Minecraft. Well, it is, but like, you know what I mean? Because it's like Internet. a plot. It's basically like a show, show at this that's point. It's like a baby zombie, small and unassuming, but persistent hey. and dangerous. Today, I'm here to talk about the Dream SMP. And now yeah. that I've said that, I'm sure that all of my viewers probably fall into one of two camps. Those yelling, at last our prayers are answered, and those that are wondering what the heck I'm talking about. So at this <laughs> point, if True. you care at all about Minecraft or YouTube or Minecraft YouTubers, you've probably heard of a guy named Dream. He's become famous for a lot of things, including manhunt videos, unsolved mystery videos, as well as an appearance on one of this channel's very own Minecraft lore videos. Yeah, I saw why that. Why is there a big neon green block creature in my video? But one of the things <laughs> that's really blown up over the course of the last year is the Dream SMP, or Survival Multiplayer Oh server. yeah, also, like, I forgot about the like kingdom thing they have going server. on with so like a monarchy. It's just Dream playing Minecraft with a lot of his friends, and well, yeah, 
off. Sort of. The truth is that the Dream SMP is to Minecraft survival multiplayer what professional wrestling is to, well, the sport of wrestling. True! Is, he actually makes a good uh, point. He actually does make a good point. By a team of Scripted, a, yeah, improv. Writers, plural. It's not to say that everyone's reading from a script. While the broad strokes of the plot are planned out, all of the connective tissue between those major hey. plot beats is improvised. And of course, there's room for plenty of unexpected games. Oh yeah, I saw this! No, 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 no. Doesn't he die? Yeah, he dies here, and that wasn't intended. That wasn't in the yeah. script, that wasn't in the script. That and he just died, yeah, Tony just <laughs> dies laughing. Ladies and gentlemen, in the world of professional wrestling, that is what we call a shoot, or a moment in professional wrestling that's unplanned, unscripted. Oh yeah, the, the chair scene like where they all just throw really chairs at them. For anyone in the audience, we all know that professional wrestling is scripted, right? Trying to summarize the timeline of the Dream SMP is like trying to summarize the timeline of the 20th century. If I tried to start, I'd have to cover the birth of a nation in no fewer than four Oh seconds. yeah, true, and true, LeManbury. Not me making a joke or trying to make an analogy here. Here. A lot of the story here is political in nature, with the ongoing narrative being oh, yeah. one of a nation in turmoil, oh, the caravan. with warring political factions trying to gain power over the populace by any means necessary. And all of it is taking place within live streams. Lots and lots of very long live yeah, streams. Yeah, the there VODs. There are over 30 people involved in this thing, with the narrative playing out over hundreds of hours of live streaming. Actually, just saying hundreds of hours is understating it, because totaling up all the live streams across Multiple oh, he's added it all together. Multiple participants already gives you close to a hundred videos to watch, and any one of those could be upwards of six to eight hours in length. It feels almost impossible to catch up with this thing, too, considering how often new live streams are happening. Seriously, I feel like I have to put a disclaimer here that the script for this video is being written right before Christmas, which almost guarantees that by the time it comes out, the things I'm predicting have either been proven right or horribly, horribly wrong. Oh, so, like, oh, okay, okay. Thing. It was without good thing he says the that thing happening in gaming in 2020 just behind among us a group of friends blowing up together on twitch because they're using minecraft to create an ongoing improv narrative is incredible and absolutely worthy of attention plus plus i was getting a lot of requests on twitter to do a theory about this and i didn't want to ignore you guys at matt pat gt by the way plus 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 i'm a musical theater nerd i hear a hamilton reference oh yeah there's, there's a lot of hamilton re wilbur. well yeah because wilbur is yeah we there's a lot of hamilton time, references began to climb how to account for his rise to the top man the hamilton references are non-stop and since we are on the subject of hamilton hamilton the musical actually provides a really good framework for how to approach telling a story with the scope of everything that's happening in the dream smp much like hamilton took a series of history defining events spanning several decades and condensed it down into a three-hour musical character study this theory is going to be taking a series of events spanning several months of six plus hour long live streams and condense it down into well something kind of resembling a character study centering on one specific hero. And spoilers for those of you who don't know the ending of Hamilton, but uh, this story also ends in tragedy. Yeah. Fact, today's video is all I mean, about who history has didn't it kind of already with just the blowing up Lemanberg thing? In the dream but I mean, Techno Spoiler though, alert, Techno is a threat. And with that intro, allow me to tell you the tragic tale of the rise and fall of a tyrant and why he might be poised to rise once again, this time from beyond the grave. Slat! He's talking about Schlatt, yeah, he's talking about Schlatt, right? Because also Schlatt is a Schlatt is also a ghost, like Wilbur. So yeah, I'm he's talking about Schlatt. Dream SMP, and I'm gonna follow their lead. It's the closest thing to being a neutral faction, almost a sort of default faction for the characters who haven't split off. Oh yeah, as you might guess, it's led by its founder, Dream. Is that the the monarchy? Veto over who's allowed in the server. For instance, back in July, when Jay Schlatt joined the server for the first time, he was banned. He was banned after since dream didn't know him when it's your party you get to decide who's on the guest list i suppose the first major faction to declare its independence from the greater dream as the manberg manberg let's in go late july with the war for independence between the manberg and the dream team faction finally settling in early august the manberg started as an autocratic nation state with self-appointed dictator uh president wilbur Suit, oh. presiding with he Tom said it wrong but right okay man. <laughs> however that dictator for life thing didn't really pan out long term after all a ruler only rules by the consent to the governed, and despite the fact that Wilbur Suit had declared himself supreme leader, the citizens weren't taking his orders all that seriously. So what do you do if you want to shore up legitimacy as a ruler? You hold an a democratic election. election. Yep. I'm running for president. The reason I'm running for president is because, well, I felt like it was unfair of me. 
to decide myself to be a dictator. Okay, so maybe if you want to believe the man himself, it was because he grew a conscience. Anyway, Wilbur Soot, joined by Tommy eh, in it as true. his running mate, ran as the politicians of... Pog! Game. Yeah, Pog. Pog for sure. Uh, the Pog. problem with democratic elections is that, well... And then swag. ...against you. Quackity, who'd been up to that point a Lemanberg outsider, decided to run against him because, well, you've got to have yourself an opposition party. My name is Quackity, and I am running for president simply because I didn't think it was fair for Wilbur Soot to run a one- Also, he wanted to let other, like, non-Europeans into Lemanberg, because Lemanberg was only European. Lemanberg to vote for just one party. Quackity ran under the party banner of, so we are- Swag. Or swag yes. For short, choosing George not Still good. as his running mate, who promptly lived up to his name by- He didn't show up, show yeah. Up the presidential debate. Way to have a brand and stick to it, man. Oh, and you heard me right. Presidential debate. The parties of Swag 2020 and- They were trending on Twitter. Ran full on campaigns, including key endorsements. They were actually- was Oh yeah, Vic Star. Advantage here as his one key alleged endorsement, KSI, never actually showed up. My one endorsement is KSI. He just hasn't happened to respond yet to my endorsement plead. He's my one endorsement. KSI? More like KSI not found. Him and George not found playing Yahtzee in the corner. Wilbur and Tommy in it, wanting to assure the voters that they were the party that best represented the will of the people, touted several key endorsements. The most notable of them... Schlatt 2020. Schlatt. Now, you might be asking yourself, wait, Jay Schlatt, didn't I just say that he was banned back in July? Oh yeah, he came back! ...before the election took place, and that was what the crowd said too. But apparently a server ban wasn't about to stop Wilbur and Tommy from bringing him in to deliver the key endorsement. That oh yeah, because Schlatt was an endorsement, and then he became an enemy. He, he became a runner-up. The only! <laughs> Oh, no! He was an endorsement. Schlatt's endorsement speech went very quickly off the rails. Democracy is yeah, overrated. Wait. You the think script. you need a president? I'll be my own president. Oh, stage, stage, stage of the script. Stage, uh, off wrong. the stage, please. Off the stage. Anyway, with this wild card entering the race, things had thoroughly Schlatt gone 2020. to chaos. With Jay the coalition Schlatt government of swag and Schlatt. Schlatt. Tommy decided to resort to political horse trading. In order to avoid the possibility of a Jay Schlatt presidency, why not invite Swag 2020 to join Pog 2020 to form a giant super party? Party, swag. Oh yeah, but so then he that it would be Quackity denied that and went with Schlatt. Backfired. The good news was that Quackity, who didn't actually want to be president and was only running as a challenger to Wilbur, was willing to give his party's votes to another party. The bad news was that he chose Jay Schlatt. I was enticed by your swag idea until you immediately admitted to me that you would only use me for votes. You guys have clearly been trying to use me this entire time. So it's Schlatt 2020. Huh. It's the kind of oh, thing yeah. that makes you think maybe from the start that this was all a ruse by Jay Schlatt, promising to endorse Pog 2020 only to get himself unbanned and then enter the fray and take over for him. True. The man over here has executed True. some epic big brain maneuvers. In the end, Pog 2020 won 45% of the vote. Swag 2020 won 30% of the vote. Jay Schlatt won 16%. But of the vote. with Swag giving its votes to Jay Schlatt, 50, Jay Schlatt 46 the election with a combined total by one. 1%. Yeah, I remember this. Barely beating out Pog's 45%. And that is where the reign of terror begins. Jay Schlatt having So he was talking about Schlatt at the beginning because Schlatt is tech. Well, he could also be talking about Wilbur because Wilbur is a ghost, but I think Schlatt also just came up as a ghost. Oh, yeah. I talked this I talked about this at the beginning of Wilbur Soot and Tommy and Tommy in it. Get him out of here. Wilbur Soot and Tommy in it were exiled. The Pog 2020 campaign was no more, but it lived on in spirit within the nation of Pogtopia. Building yes, Pogtopia. Operations and working with a few members of the administration. Oh yeah, Nikki Tubbo exile. and That's right. had a spy on It was Tubbo, Nikki. Yeah, Tubbo was a spy. And that spy's name was yeah. Tubbo. Despite winning and then the election, Nikki I think joined really them. winning over the people. You know, calling democracy a lie. Oh, and then Techno the also joined them. Yeah, Techno. Techno just wanted anarchy. anarchy. So to get a few popularity points, he began planning the Manberg Festival. Oh, yeah. Celebration the Manberg Festival? To Hold on. Events. I want to talk about that because the Manberg Festival is very interesting. My theory is that the Manberg Festival was originally planned by Jay Schlatt to actually be the execution of Tubbo instead of the festival. So that was my guess. That was my guess. Was Well, that was my theory that, you know, that actually the festival was really the execution of Tubbo because he knew he was the spy. 
And he just wanted to cover that up, that plan up, by saying it was it would be a festival. And deliver the keynote speech. Tubbo and the old guard seize the opportunity to upstage the festival by placing TNT under the event stage. All Tubbo had to do was to give his speech and run away before... Oh yeah, the, the bomb. Out. But Jay Schlatt had other plans. Our people have been beaten down by royals and dictators for so long, now we are finally free. Free to elect who we want, free to live how we want. I'd like to thank everyone oh, yeah. for coming to this wonderful event. <laughs> What's wrong, Schlatt? No, it's just... Oh, yeah, let the I festival begin. Hmm, nothing sinister at all about that laugh. By the end of the speech, Jay Schlatt had encased the undercover spy Tubbo in yellow concrete, sentencing him to that's immediate not, execution. That's not... That's sand. Let me do something real quick. Yeah. Okay. Schlatt, what are you... Oh, yeah, yeah. Schlatt, what are you yeah. doing? Tubbo. <gasps> yeah? I know what you've been up to. Actually... With the... The tyrants that we kicked out of this server, that we kicked out of this great country. Do you know I what happens to, uh, to Technoblade? Tubbo was sentenced to death. He killed all of them, by the way. He went on a with huge Tubbo's rampage. Technoblade being the one to serve as executioner. There was a little accidental collateral damage with Jay Schlatt also dying in the explosion. But don't worry, he got better. Across all of these events, one yeah. thing should be painfully clear. Jay Schlatt is, in D&D terms, totally lawful evil. Wilbur Soot, not the character, but the out of character writer who's the closest thing we have to a creative authority for this chapter of the SMP confirmed in a Reddit post quote Schlatt is very lawful evil Schlatt follows one creed I was elected fairly I will rule until I lose the next election he uses this power malevolently to assert dominance and punish rebellious factions emphasis on punishment Schlatt isn't very concerned with keeping order or even maintaining justice his priority is delivering suffering and pain to those he sees as deserving it under the law now after this failed ah, attempt at okay. insurgency, it was only inevitable that Jay Schlatt's Manberg would go to war with Pogtopia. With Jay Schlatt's reign of terror coming to an end in the most- Oh yeah, he had a heart attack, right? Possible, running he away a from stroke. the fighting, stumbling into the hot dog van that originally the served caravan. as the nexus for Wilbur Soot and Tommy and its drug empire, getting drunk and experiencing what appeared to be a stroke or a heart attack. Anybody smell you toast? Died. For those of oh, yeah. you who don't know, smelling toast is actually a classic symptom of having a stroke. Anyway, the much beloved leader received a massive funeral, with everyone behaving with exactly the level of reverence and Yeah, I didn't see, see that actually. Show for Jay Schlatt. His entire body was hey, picked guys, apart and taken. What remains weren't taken as souvenirs were recovered by Quackity as part of a plot of his own. I have a plan <laughs> within my position. Yeah, so he was talking about Schlatt. Schlatt's bones. He was talking I about Schlatt. that grave open and I took it. Wait, you're going to try and bring Jay Schlatt? Yeah, yeah, I was right about the Jay, Jay Schlatt. Schlatt back to life. But you know what Frankenstein did when he brought Frankenstein 2 back to life. Frankenstein 2 was under his command. You know what this means? We can use Jay Schlatt as a as a political puppet. Uh, Quackity, did you actually read the book? Because if your takeaway was Frankenstein animated a monster and it was completely under his control and totally did not backfire at all, you, you might want to read a few of those chapters again. So with that level setting out of the way, what follows are my predictions about the future of the Dream SMP. Oh. And it all centers So yeah, this is a little late. In particular. First off, in case it wasn't obvious, we haven't seen the last of Jay Schlatt. And I'm not just talking about his appearance as a ghost in a live stream of questionable canonicity. Is this like part of the plot that you guys... Screw oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty. It's, you know what? It's, it's fine. It's fine. How are you doing? He's been too big a player for far too long to simply be written out of existence. And more importantly, the groundwork has been laid for his eventual resurrection. Wilbur Soot mentioned on a live stream that the team was playing with the idea that each character gets three canon deaths before it's considered permanent. Everyone gets three. Everyone gets three canon deaths. Before they real life die, yes. Even if we count Jay Schlatt's death during the festival rocket launcher explosion as canon, between that and his heart attack slash stroke, he's yet to use up all his lives. Besides, this is too good of an opportunity for history to repeat itself in an absolutely poetic fashion. Because while Jay Schlatt is lawful evil and motivated to punish people for going against him, his role as Punisher is much more central than that. Jay Schlatt is almost like a karmic force of the universe who punishes people for their hubris. Remember, the entire reason he was able to rejoin the server in the first place was because the Pog 2020 party thought it would be politically advantageous for them to receive his endorsement. They looked to use Jay Schlatt as a tool to achieve their own political end, but it failed. And it backfired horribly, leading to them not only what? losing the election, but being forced into exile by the monster they had helped to create, ultimately leading to an all out war against the faction that he usurped from them. It's and techno? now we have ourselves a cackling quackity saying that he plans to use the powers of necromancy to reanimate Schlatt as a political puppet, so now he can seize control of Manberg. Quackity, have you learned nothing? Based on the comment about Frankenstein's monster, the answer seems to be yes. It's my view that Jay Schlatt, more than being a 
Samir villain here is really- So yeah, I don't think Jay Shalad actually came back as a ghost yet, but I think they are thinking about doing that. I- I swear. The fact that Wilbur is a ghost as well, and he doesn't remember anything, kinda says a lot. It'll end predictably, with Jay Shalad conniving some scheme that results in him returning to the game, and him eventually sitting on the throne, with the people around him being forced to do battle against the very monster they helped to create. Much like the Joker in the Dark Knight, his real power hinges on his ability to bring out the worst in others. And the only way for him to lose is for the people around him to allow their better selves to take over. Until then- To be fair, that actually is a good analogy, because Wilbur did go and- Well, you know, the character Wilbur went insane. You know, and blew up Manbird. So yeah, to be honest, this was a good theory. I feel like it is definitely gonna happen eventually. And yeah, I- I feel like it is, based on the fact that Wilbur is a ghost, you know, it, it, it definitely seems likely. And honestly, yeah, I, I feel like I knew exactly where this theory was going because I actually knew a lot about, you know, a lot of it was just filling up context for like the people who don't know and I could tell. Because, you know, what else are you going to do for a, a prediction video? And I guess that context does relate to the theory because it adds, you know, it gives context to, like, what his, what he's thinking. I did not see the funeral, though, so, you know, that was nice to know that, like, Quackity is planning on res resurrecting him. So, yeah, it's a definite plot thing. They're definitely going to bring him back. Like, I feel like that's not even a theory. It's kind of just obvious. I mean, I guess he's just obligated to say that because, you know, it's game theory. So, you know, it's always a theory. Yeah, but either way, if Schlatt does come back, which would be cool to see, I do feel like he could reign terror. I feel like he could do some cool stuff, I guess. I don't really know how to relate to the exile arc that's happening right now, but yeah, I I guess that's something that's going to happen. But yeah, anyways, guys, enjoy the like and subscribe my channel. See you next one. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.